Hello Earthlings, hope all of you are well, out for spotting with you today we are at a Nikon event to see the first generation full frame mirrorless by Nikon. Before I start a small presentation, first let me open my mind, my, my heart to you. I always feel that we have a beautiful team here, which has been working for the last seven years for the brand Nikon. Uh, thank you so much team for making customers our family members. So I thank each one of you for helping the brand probably at this point to launch this in front of you. I'm so proud because this is what we were waiting for probably for quite a long time. And being Nikon uh, people and used, you, of course you are using other brands also, but always people expected Nikon to come out with a uh, thing which is going to be revolutionizing the uh, camera industry. And today... So this was the Z7 launch, what an amazing camera, I used it like in total for maybe 6 minutes both today and before and wow it really is amazing. I'm gonna get my hands on it shortly and then I'm gonna get my hands on it for a couple of days after the event to make a more in-depth review but guys this camera it's different than the other mirrorless and, and it's just amazing, it really is. Wow, f1.8 is sharp. So guys, this is the new Nikon mirrorless, the Z7, and I have the 35mm uh, 1.8 on. This camera is, is different uh, than other mirrorless and a little different than DSLRs. First thing, amazingly, that you notice the grip. The grip is so important, and the grip, if you can notice all three fingers go, so it's a perfect grip. Unlike other cameras that are mirrorless and similar, the finger doesn't go down so most other cameras are like this but with this it's a proper grip and that is one of the most important things that you, you should be looking for in any camera but more specifically mirrorless because they're usually smaller so if you have a bigger hand this is a very very key feature so this is the menu system i like it it's overall chic minimal and it's excellent one thing that this camera has is the pinpoint feature which I like it unlike the single point it's much more smaller and you can get really good eye focus using this and I like that very much uh, and here is on the live view you can see how much the pinpoint is small and that's that's just something very important when shooting portraits if you press on this one more time you get your uh, exposure and this, this is something I use often to make sure my shot my shots are aligned I really like the feel of this camera, like I said, it's just, it's just very good, I shouldn't drop it. And also one thing that I like is the LCD, it's small and you can see everything within that very small range, which is a good feature to have. ISO dial right here, conveniently located alongside with the exposure dial. Exposure dial is one that I use often, especially when shooting portraits and the rec uh, video re recording button. Overall, this camera is just well built the boxes are in the right place everything is accessible with your hands and i like that so now we're gonna use the pin feature which is unlike the single point feature this is much more smaller so it's gonna be better for eye focusing which is important for portrait photography so let's put that into testing right now look at it the f1.8 is just really beautiful have a look at this shot wow that is very sharp. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt this vlog. I've discovered that when I transferred the uh, images from the camera to my phone by a snap bridge, I was shooting raw and uh, uh, it didn't transfer. I only have some very low quality JPEGs that it's 
pointless to show so sorry about that but i'm gonna get my hands on the camera soon and i'm gonna make a more in-depth review about it this was more of a preview of the camera and the launch in the middle east so you can change everything within the viewfinder and that is an excellent feature to have very good change the focusing uh, change the raw to JPEG that's something that you shouldn't do but if you want to you have the option so basically you have all the menu within the viewfinder and the viewfinder it's just so clear and unlike other mirrorless cameras that I tested before the Nikon the Z7 is different it's just much more better from the EPF I don't know if, I, if that's the right thing they put a lot of emphasis on that and they should because it is excellent the first impressions from this camera was great and I know that I mentioned this many times so far but the most important thing in any camera in my opinion is the grip and I put a lot of emphasis on that because your camera needs to feel good in your hand in order for you to be encouraged more to go out and create. Overall I'm very pleased with what Nikon has to offer with this first generation mirrorless. So this is the camera guys, this is the Z7, I absolutely love it, it's phenomenal. I'm gonna get my hands on it in the next few days to make a more in-depth review of it, gonna take some portrait cityscape of it and test the real dynamic range that this small but just perfect camera has. So stay tuned for that. So can you speak to us a little bit about the features of the low light that this camera has? Because I know that this is something we test out in Madagascar. So can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so it's a completely new function uh, to me. Uh, and what it does, I, I don't know how it works, but it just, uh, when I lose autofocus normally, so when it gets darker and the camera is no longer able to focus, when I switch on the uh, low light autofocus option, it, uh, it's, it slows down the autofocus process and it sort of very slowly works towards the focus. Um, like I said, I don't know how it works, but uh, you can just hear the, the lens like finding where the focus is and then um, finds it. So I, I wouldn't be able to put a number to it, like how much darker it can still focus, but uh, much darker than usual. How long uh, would you say that it takes, like how many seconds for it to complete the focus depending on the focus? Oh, well, I didn't really use a stopwatch or anything. <laughs> uh, obviously it's, it takes longer than usual because usually you click and either it focuses or it starts hunting. And in this case it, it just starts that focusing process. I would say maybe two to three seconds or something. That's all bad. Yeah, That's so, bad. But you have to consider that very dark conditions so those were those are conditions that you would normally not even be able to uh, focus in anyway so it's either manual focus or the low light yeah. yes yeah so uh, do you reckon that it would be easier for you to manually focus or use the low light feature the low light focus? so i have noticed that i'm not particularly good at manual focusing <laughs> so so whenever i have the opportunity i was all i will always use the other focus so if the autofocus doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, lock on, then I'll use the low light autofocus to try. And it, only when that doesn't try, usually what I do is I have a little torch that I will just shine and then I can still use autofocus. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about this camera? Do you think it will replace like how robust it is for wildlife you could say? Uh, well, I, I think this camera is not a replacement for another camera. I think it's no. I think it's an entirely different concept. So uh, it makes very little sense to compare this mirrorless system to a DSLR system. So it's basically uh, either you really love this or you really love DSLR uh, because they they have pros and cons. So. I'm definitely going to use uh, Z7 in my camera bag, uh, especially for uh, trips where weight is an issue or, uh, or size is an issue. So, for instance, it's very easy to put a body like this in my camera bag as a backup, you know, where I would usually not have space for another D5. Or, you know? and, um, 
And for instance, for this particular project, I did a lot of hiking in the mountains. So, and it was sometimes almost 90 degrees up in very warm conditions. This is really a joy to carry with you compared to, compared to like a, a, a larger system. So I will really look at it from one project to another. And for the one project, I will, I will bring these bodies. And for another project, I will a completely other selection of bodies and lenses. So this just gives me extra options. That's how I see it. Thank you very much for Okay, you're welcome. Uh, so Danny, guys, this is Danny Eid, one of the most well-known photographers in the Middle East. His Instagram handle is right here. Danny, what do you think of the Z7? Uh, the Z7. Uh, so there are so many advantages of the new uh, Z7 and Z6 mirrorless. Definitely the, how lightweight is the camera. Uh, we're talking about 45 megapixel resolution, uh, which is amazing. Uh, the same quality of uh, sensor in the D850. Uh, for me, I'm uh, more in the, into SLR, and this is the first time I... I tried the uh, mirrorless uh, Z7. The electronic viewfinder is also an additional uh, weather ceiling, definitely for people uh, more into landscape photography and outdoor. Uh, we cannot talk about all the specs, uh, but I uh, can't wait to, to test uh, the product uh, in the upcoming period. Yeah. Who do you think this camera is best suited for? Like, who would you this recommend to? Uh, so any travel photographer who is looking for lightweight camera to travel with, uh, bloggers, uh, street photography, food photography, even landscape photography because of the weather seeding, uh, because many other things and we have to see the, uh, the quality in terms of dynamic range, uh, low light uh, performance for the ISO, uh, I think it's a general photography and mainly for people who are into filmmaking and video because you have the stabilization inside the, the lens, inside the camera, I mean, and uh, it's a very light way to use it on a gimbal. It's not like using the SLR on a gimbal, which is it's, uh, almost 700 grams. Yeah. Yeah. This is an excellent camera, and I can't wait to test it out. Uh, I think I'm going to test it out in the next few days. I really am curious about the dynamic range. Have you tested the dynamic range yet? Uh, yeah, I, I took a couple of shots, uh, definitely not ideal, uh, but it's the same as the H50. We have the same uh, BSI uh, sensor, we have a new processor which is XC6, uh, the previous of the D850 was the XC5. I think the dynamic range is the same uh, and even the, the low light performance of for ISO. So the challenge is not here, the dynamic range, because we know that Nikon, when they introduce something, they always work on the sensor and they have uh, very good quality in terms of the sensor and the history in the SLR. But I think the challenge is more into uh, this new option of uh, F mount. I really love this idea where we can use uh, third party lenses, we can use uh, uh, mainly the lenses, uh, the mirrorless lenses which is introduced by Nikon. We don't have that much lenses, we have maybe 35, 24, and 50 millimeter. So, on the roadmap of Nikon, they are saying that in the upcoming uh, year, in 2019, we have like a bunch of uh, new lenses. But I still can use my old. Uh, uh, F mount lenses uh, on this mirrorless, which is ideal. Thank you so much for your time, Dania. I appreciate it. I yeah. can't wait to test this camera. It's really amazing. As I know I said it a few times, but the grip and the viewfinder, really amazing. Yeah, and the one thing, you know, I just want to add on the viewfinder. So wherever you are using and going from left to right, you don't see any lagging. It's very smooth, uh, it's very sharp, at 36 million dots, so it's uh, perfect for uh, uh, any photographer. And uh, thank you, uh, Alpha well, Spotting. Yeah. Uh, you uh, not really have a big hand, so how do you feel about the mirrors in your hand? How yeah. do you feel about it? So it's amazing because, first of all, if you are coming from, uh, if you are a Nikon user and uh, you came from SLR, you understand how easy it is to locate all the buttons, regardless the uh, 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 the design of the, 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 the body actually. I really like the grip from here where you can keep holding like that. I don't need even the strap. I feel like very, very stable like that. Uh, very easy to locate all the buttons, same as any SLR of Nikon. Maybe there is significant change, significant change in uh, the buttons where you can do the bracketing and stuff like that at the timer. But so far, uh, all the buttons are in the right place, same as the SLR. Perfect. Thank you so much, Danny, guys. This is Danny. Yeah. Thank you so much. For Thank you, Alhan. I really love your work. Keep uh, doing great. <laughs> Thank you.